Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today I thought I'd do a little different video. I'm going to hopefully be selling at a car boot on Sunday. Um, I'm going to get rid of some of my old stock that's not selling on eBay and a couple of bigger items that I don't really want to ship. So I just thought I'd give you a few hints and tips about selling a car boot. I haven't sold a car boot for a few years. I used to do it as a kid with my mum and dad, my brother, and I have done one since, but other than that, I haven't really sold a car boot recently. I go to car boots every week, as some of you may know if you watch my channel, I'm an eBay reseller full time, that's my job. So stay tuned so I can show you what you need to sell a car boot and some hints and tips. So the most essential thing you'll need is a table to put it on. Now most people probably use these wallpaper paste tables. I got mine from Wilkinson's, it was £12, so not very expensive. You could probably get similar things on Amazon maybe, and um, if you want to do this more regularly, I'd probably invest in like a plastic, um, actual plastic top table, which you can have metal legs on. I have seen those on Amazon, but they're a lot more expensive. So if you're only doing it occasionally, a paste table like this is perfect. Next, I would recommend getting one of these sort of tarpaulin sheets. I got this from Amazon for £5 something. Um, I will link it in the description of this video if you're interested in getting one this size. It's about six foot by four foot, I think. But you can put it down. Usually best to put it next to your stool, not underneath the table, so people can get to your table. And on that you can put bigger stuff like board games and other stuff which I'll show you in a minute. So another thing I'd recommend you getting is change. I've managed to save up some pound coins, some silver bits and some two pound coins along with some five pound notes and an odd tenner just because you will get that one person who brings you a 20 pound note for a 50p item. So it's always best to have some change to hand because you don't want to lose a sale because someone doesn't have any change on them. Another thing to have to hand, it's not essential again, but just a good tip, is some carrier bags. Now, it used to be a lot easier to have carrier bags, obviously, because they used to be free. Not anymore, these are like just some spare bag for lives. Most people I would expect to bring a bag now to a car boot sale, but you will, again, always get the one customer that says, have you got a bag? So it's always best to have a few to hand, just in case. Then obviously the next most essential item you have is lots of stock to sell. This is some of the stuff that I've pulled out already. It's not all of the stuff I'm going to be selling at the car boot. Um, I'm going to try and pick out some board games. But yeah, these items are mostly items I've either put on eBay and they're not selling. They're small items that won't sell. Or in the case of this big... Sylvanian family's house, uh, it's just something I don't really want to ship because it's too big. The occasional item here has a defect like that Simpsons mug I picked up last week. It has a little dent in the top so I don't really want to put that on eBay just to get a return because I know I can see that happening. So I'll quickly lay out some of this stock just to show you how to set up your store and then I'll go over a little tip that I use when I sell out a car boot. So this is literally an example of how I'd quickly set up my car boot stall. Anything that's tall or could be stood up can go at the back of the stall, like these DVDs. Anything that needs to lay flat, small little items uh, can go at the front. Uh, also kids can obviously have a look if there's toys and things you've got if they're at the front. To the side, which is probably where I'll have my sheet is a tarpaulin sheet as I mentioned earlier and it's got some bigger items on there that you wouldn't put on the table, you wouldn't lay these on the table because they take up too much room. It's got some board games, a cushion and that Sylvanian family's house. Obviously I haven't finished pulling stock yet and I will be filling this up with some more board games probably. Now some tips for selling. There are two ways you can sell a car boot. Pricing your items or not pricing your items. 
I fall into the group that likes to price their items at Akabu. I know not everyone likes it, but I hate being asked every five seconds how much something is and trying to remember how much I want for it or how much the item is. So, I price my items. Now, I don't use actual white stickers that you could pick up from Debate Smiths or somewhere. What I use is these little index markers. They're just from Tesco's. They cost like 50p, I think, 75p at the most. Um, they're basically like post-it note type stickiness. Um, so what I do is on the sticky bit, I write the price and just cut off the bit at the end that doesn't have any sticky to it. Uh, this just means that people can buy stuff and just peel the labels off really easily. Um, instead of struggling to get those white stickers off, I hate that, and obviously if it's on cardboard it'll rip. You'll see here on the DVDs, just to get rid, I've priced them 50p each or three DVDs for a pound. Obviously if people buy lots of things, I will bundle it up and knock a little bit off. I don't really want to knock too much off because I have priced these items to sell. As you can see, they're really cheap. But loads of these DVDs have been on my eBay already. They're just not selling. Or, like these Star Wars ones, they are just a bit too low quality. Like they've got a few more scratches than I like on them. And yeah, that's why I'm selling them. Because normally I would keep DVDs on my shop. Another couple of big items I've pulled out to sell are these Build-A-Bear wardrobes. They're empty, they're just in my stock room and they are using up so much space. I was going to try selling them on Marketplace, on Facebook, but in the end I just didn't get around to it. And yeah, it's a great item to take to a car boot because it can just be offloaded to someone. Because I do not fancy shipping <laughs> those. If you can, it's a really good idea to have more than one person manning your stall just because of the sheer number of people. My car boot sale that I'll be selling at is really good because it lets you set up um, from 6.30 in the morning and then at 7.30 they let all the buyers in. It's not one of these, you just turn up and all the buyers dive in your boot, which is really annoying. Um, I used to call them car boot zombies as a kid because that's what they were like. They'd literally swarm around your car as you pulled up and they were like zombies. Uh, so yeah, if you can go to a car boot like that, it's well worth doing that because you get time to set up and you don't have people diving in your car while you're trying to set up or trying to ask you prices, etc. while you're setting up. Also, be on the lookout for thieves. Unfortunately, there are shoplifters, shoplifters, car boot lifters um, around. I've had it myself at one of my stalls when I was a kid. Someone nicked a Portland Bill annual. I know it's not a really big deal, but that's, I witnessed that as a kid and it's always stayed with me. So yeah, if you can have more than one person selling at your stall, then it's a good idea. Unfortunately, I'll be doing this on my own but I haven't really got anything high value, as you can see from what I've laid out. So if the odd little bit goes missing, it goes missing. But yeah, it's just a word of warning, this does go on. So I hope those tips and tricks have been useful for you. If you're going to be selling a car boot, let me know in the comments. And which fence do you fall under? Pricing your items or not pricing your items? Just give me like pros and cons if you don't price your items, just because that's what I don't do. So it'd be just good to hear some other points of view. And other than that, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all soon. Take care, bye.